Okay, so now we know how sensitive thrust and current draw are to changing variables of motors, props, and battery combinations. Now in this video, we're going to look at the different methods that you can use to estimate what a given prop battery uh, motor combination will give you in terms of thrust and current output. Now, for simplicity, I'm going to define the drone drivetrain as a particular prop motor and battery combination. So anytime I refer to drivetrain, I'm just referring to some uh, combination of props, motors, and batteries. Okay, that's just because saying prop motor battery combination is a lot of syllables, and I don't want to use all those syllables, you know? All right, so there are three main ways to determine the thrust and current draw of your given drivetrain. And the first is to buy the drivetrain uh, hardware and, and bench test and find the results yourself. The second method is to peruse through the internet and find other people's results and triangulate and average those uh, thrust and current draw findings together. And the third is just to use empirical data that is provided by the manufacturer that you bought your motor from. All right, so method one, bench testing. Now this may be a preferred method if you already have uh, motors laying around the house and you don't know if they would fit on your desired drone setup or not. But basically what you do is you fix the, dr the motor to some heavy material so it won't tip over, and you flip the prop orientation so that when it's spinning, it's actually pushing down. So then you put that on a scale of some sort, you zero out the weight of that block of wood and the motor, and then you crank up the throttle on your motor, and any the reading that is returned on your scale is gonna be the grams of thrust that your motor is producing. Now the pros here is that you can have a decent amount of confidence in the data that you've acquired. Uh, the cons are obviously that you have to buy the components of the drivetrain that you are thinking about using before you know if it'll work or not on your drone. And it's not as time efficient if someone else has already uh, found the results. It, it might not be worth it to have to set up your test and do this on your own. All right, method two, triangulate from other people's results. So this method is based on a theoretical assumption, which is that motors of similar size, KV rating, and stator configuration should theoretically produce the same thrust and current draw for a given prop and battery choice. So what does this mean? It means that if you can find results, thrust and current draw data, from someone else's bench test for a particular motor, let's just say a 2212-920 kV motor, and you can't find thrust and current draw data for the motor you're looking at, all you have to do is find data for a similar motor and drivetrain setup, and you can estimate that that motor and drivetrain setup is similar enough to your setup that you can use that as a foundation for estimating what your motor is capable in, of in terms of thrust and current. Now, if that was confusing, let's just walk you through a quick example. All right, so let's say I am here looking at this motor. We have a 2212-1000 kV motor. And, you know, it looks cheap, looks awesome, we want to use it, but we don't have any thrust and current draw information here. We have an, a suggested amount of lipo cells two to three, but we don't have any way to estimate what our thrust and current draw is. So what we can do is copy this motor size and KV rating and go ahead and search it on the old Google. And odds are is someone has already bench tested and found thrust and current draw results for this type of motor. So what can we do? We can go down and click here and maybe this will be the first bench test we look at. So let's go to the end here. And it looks like this is around when this guy is testing maximum throttle. Okay. So first of all, what is his drivetrain setup? He's using a 3S LiPo and 
Um, he is using 10 inch props, 44.5 pitch. And looks like his maximum grams of thrust is around 830. And his maximum current draw was 15. Okay, so that would be one data point that we could use to average with other people's findings. Now we have to find a similar drive train using a 3S battery in 10 inch props and this size motor. And let's search in YouTube for the motor that we want to find results for. And we'll see if anything pops up. All right, so this looks similar to the drivetrain that we just looked at, 2212 motor, 10 inch props. Okay, just need to figure out what battery type he's using, and I think you can see that here at the end. So it looks like this guy was using a 3S LiPo battery, and his maximum thrust estimate was 770 grams, and he was pulling around 14 amps. So compare this to the last bench test we looked at, where we were looking at 830 grams of thrust and 15 amps of current draw. So you can begin to see how we can triangulate an estimate for what our drivetrain setup might produce in terms of thrust and current draw that we are looking at and are interested in. Okay, that's a very convoluted and contrived process, but the pros are that we can still estimate a thrust and current draw for our drivetrain of interest before buying, which is crucial. And it's a great way of estimating thrust and current if no data exists from the manufacturer that you're buying your motor from. And now the con is obviously like, we don't know how confident we can be in everyone's bench testing. They maybe have some flaws in their methodologies. So this is probably the most inaccurate method, but Again, since our only goal here is to estimate, any estimation process is going to have embedded within it some inefficiencies and some errors. And it just so happens that this method has the most amount of potential errors. All right, method three is my personal favorite. It is extremely convenient. And with this method, the motor manufacturer that you're buying from uh, does some bench tests in-house for that motor and drivetrain setup that you're interested in and provides you with thrust tables like this. Now I pulled this from the website that you can buy the motors from. I'll show you that real quick. All right, here we go. For, we're on Emacs website. Uh, they, this is a 2213 motor and 920 kV. And here is our motor. And here's our thrust table. Because we can see the voltage that was used to produce this data in this thrust table. We have different sets of prop sizes that were used to populate different sets of data. And we have the data up here, current, thrust, power, efficiency, speed, and working temperature. And so with this setup, we can very, very quickly estimate what our thrust and current draw would be given a battery prop and motor selection. So if we want to use 10 inch props, we can see here the maximum uh, thrust would be 670 grams of thrust. and 10 amps of current. So very quickly we could determine that if we had four of these motors on a quadcopter we would have around 2600 grams of thrust. Now we didn't have to go uh, running around all the different areas of the internet and triangulating other people's bench tests. We could just simply look at the results produced by the manufacturer and get a quick estimate of if this particular drivetrain would work on our drone setup or not given our thrust to weight ratio goals. Now the pros here, obviously convenience of estimating thrust and current draws, given the thrust tables, and you can use, and these thrust tables are specific to your motor, and we know that because it was produced by the manufacturer. The cons are that the empirical data produced might not actually reflect the actual results seen on your finish, finished vehicle that is flying in the air, but this con is going to produce to the other two, two methods as well. So this is by far the best method of uh, estimating thrust and current draw when you're designing a multi-rotor. And this is the method that we will be using to design the multi-rotor of this course.